Hey everyone, thank you for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I had an amazing request from Miss Kennedy to talk about this whole concept of leaky gut. And it's estimated that over 80% of us have some form of leaky gut. And I'm just so excited to talk to you about to talk to you about this today because it's something that's very fascinating and something that we can easily fix with foods, which is amazing. So I'm going to try and see if I can get a screen share going so that you can see my screen so that you can follow along. I've created notes for you. Um, so you definitely don't have to take notes because I hated taking notes as a student. So let me see here. Ah, screen share. There we go. This top. How is everyone? I wish I could record this live, but I just know if I recorded this live, you wouldn't be able to see my computer. And I've had such terrible, terrible experience with Facebook Live lately that I'll go on and then I'll press finish and it turns out it's not recording. So, so excited to be doing this brief tutorial for you on leaky gut, how you can heal your gut for good because Hippocrates, the father of medicine, actually said that all disease begins in the gut, which is, huge and amazing and something that we can completely fix for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, today we're gonna to talk about um, how big of a problem leaky gut is. Like I said, over 80% of us suffer with some form of leaky gut. And we're also gonna talk about some of the biggest causes and triggers as well as some of the symptoms. Not all symptoms have to be GI related. Um, leaky gut actually affects our entire body and the symptoms might not be so obvious. So we're gonna talk about that. And we're going to talk about how um, other conditions like adrenal fatigue, any changes with your thyroid skin, how that is actually connected to leaky gut because again, all disease begins in your gut. And a lot of the times when I see patients, we'll be talking about something and I'll be like, okay, how is your digestion? And they'll ask me like, Brianne, what does that have to do with my skin? And I'm like, it has a lot to do with it. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, we'll also go over some foods, some things to remove, and then some supplements um, that would help if you so choose. So again, as you know, I'm a big fan of individualized medicine and customized approaches. So this may not be the plan for you. We are going to be talking about general overviews that um, absolutely implementing these things will be healthy for you, but maybe you need a more individualized, customized approach. You are more than welcome to come see me in clinic if that is the case, and I would be happy to connect you with a functional medicine doctor, a naturopathic doctor, someone who can help you in your area as well if you need that. So, customized approach. So, let's go. I hope you can see my screen we are going to talk exactly what is leaky gut. Leaky gut just means intestinal permeability. This is what it's often referred to in the medical literature. PubMed is um, an online medical literature. It compiles all the different journal articles. And when I did a search, there was over 11,000 studies on intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So this is something that's well researched, we're learning more about it each and every day, and something that is becoming more mainstream, not just naturopathic medicine. And our small intestines have these tight junctions, and it's kind of like a net, and things are not supposed to be getting through that aren't supposed to be getting through. So there's like a barrier. It's called semi-permeable barrier, small intestine tight junction things. So what happens when these small intestines get damaged they sort of become leaky and these holes get bigger and bigger in our, our small intestines. And that allows things like um, food particles to get through that were not meant to, meant to enter the bloodstream. Now they're getting through um, and this is causing inflammation. Other things that are getting through um, are like different types of microbes that were never supposed to enter our bloodstreams, um, food particles, gluten, bad bacteria, things like that. Um, and all of this compiled is causing inflammation and we know inflammation increases our risk for so many chronic diseases and it's so important to lower our overall burden of inflammation. This can also lead to maldigestion and malabsorption. Maybe you've heard the saying that you know we are what we eat but that's not necessarily true because there's all these other factors like digestion and absorption. So if you are eating great foods but you're not digesting them and even worse if you're not absorbing them 
then that's a problem. We can't just say you are what you eat anymore. It's you are what you digest and absorb. So this, if you're not digesting it, if you're not absorbing it, this is going to lead to um, mineral deficiencies. I would love to see all my patients have like very basic blood work to see what you're deficient in because maybe you're eating a healthy diet, but if you're not absorbing these things specifically like B12, zinc, iron, magnesium, um, the first thing I think of when I see patients with these deficiencies is like, what is the health of the gut? What is going on there? Are they actually not eating these foods or are they not um, absorbing them? So again, we said leaky gut is inflammation, um, GI stuff, but this goes further beyond the gut. It can really lead to um, inflammation and food sensitivities, but this is not just to the gut. It goes further than this. You know, our immune system, 80% of our immune system is in our gut. So maybe you are constantly getting sick, right? So, or maybe you're going the other way. Maybe your immune system is overacting and you're having autoimmune um, diseases like Hashimoto's or lupus, things like that can be a sign that maybe we need to address your gut. And everybody's body definitely responds differently. Maybe you have GI symptoms, maybe you don't. Um, maybe you have food intolerance intolerances or food sensitivities or like maybe your thyroid's going to be impacted first maybe you're more of the autoimmune type so backing up a little bit to the autoimmune type component if we are having food particles getting through these bigger holes in our intestines what's going to happen is our immune system is going to put little flags on it so all these food particles that are not supposed to be in our bloodstream are having flags so that our like big white blood cells and all our like immune system will like get rid of them, right? But what happens is a little bit we can deal with, our body can get rid of it, but the more and more we have, if we have this high burden, those, what we call the flags are antigens, we call the food particles, or the flags are antibodies, the food particles are antigens, those antigen antibody complexes are going to start getting deposited in different organ systems. And the number one place that we see it is the thyroid. So this is what's gonna cause autoimmune thyroid disease because now our body is going to be attacking the thyroid. So, Leaky gut, I hope you come to realize, it doesn't just affect the gut, it affects the whole person. Um, so one, sinuses and mouth. Sinuses, like if you're getting frequent colds, um, sinus infections, mucousy, running nose, food sensitivities, that could be a sign of leaky gut. It affects your brain. So things like anxiety, depression, ADHD, mood changes, headaches, brain fogs, difficulty concentrating, um, those could be signs of leaky gut. Rashes, um, psoriasis, rosacea, acne, those are skin-based signs of leaky gut. And then we've talked a lot about thyroid, um, Hashimoto's, hypothyroid, Graves, those types of thyroid issues um, could be a sign that like, hey, we need to look at your gut and what's going on and what food particles are getting through that maybe shouldn't. And then again, we like the obvious colon symptoms are there in leaky gut as well, such as the number one thing that I personally see is constipation. It is not uncommon for someone to come into my clinic who has like one bowel movement a week. And I can't believe that when they tell me, but yes, this can be a sign of leaky gut. We need to have at least one good form bowel movement a day to like get rid of those toxins so that we're not recycling those toxins or those hormones. So that's really important. Other GI signs would be like diarrhea, um, IBS, IBD, and then those complexes that we were talking about not only can deposit in our thyroid, but they can also deposit in our joints, causing um, like rheumatoid arthritis symptoms, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, those types of things, as well as um, adrenal fatigue and just feeling like overwhelmed, the overwhelmed, the brain fog, completely burnt out. So, yes, if you have any of these symptoms, we can address them and kind of mask those symptoms, but that is not getting to the root cause. And unless we look at your gut, if gut is the root cause, we need to address it and we need to correct it because masking those like surface symptoms is never going to make you feel well again. So now let's move on. I didn't move the slides for you, so I have no idea where we are. I just kind of went on a tangent. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the biggest causes of leaky gut. So I don't know where we are. <laughs> I have no idea. Anyways, I'll just keep going. So number one, the biggest cause of leaky gut or intestinal permeability is a poor diet. Um, eating inflammatory foods, not eating enough fibrous foods, not eating enough fermented foods, um, not eating 
enough. Sorry, I have a message. Mm. Eating like toxins, pesticides, herbicides, those can all really impact our gut as well as gluten. We talked in a previous video that gluten contains gliadin, which actually binds to zonulin. Zonulin is the door handle on these intestinal cells. And when we constantly upregulate zonulin, we're opening the doors for these spaces to get larger and more things to plow through. So casein and gluten, um, we talked about that in a previous previous video, um, they can definitely lead to intestinal permeability and a whole slew of other symptoms associated with leaky gut. So those ones are our food ones we want to remove, those inflammatory triggers. That would be amazing if you could do that and something I want you guys all to be doing in these, this six-week program. Um, as well as we need to look at our skincare products. Skincare products, hair products, cleaning products, they all contain a lot of chemicals that can negatively affect our guts, our hormones. A lot of them are carcinogens, but also obesogens. This is a new term um, that these chemicals are actually impacting our hormones and causing us to put on more weight, even if we were eating the exact same diet and exercising. Um, what else do we need to remove? Oh, the obvious, like medications can damage our guts. Um, antibiotics are the number one cause, unfortunately, of gut damaging medications. Yes, we need antibiotics. Not always do we need antibiotics, but when we do need them, it's awesome that they are there, but we just want to be making sure that they are warranted when we are using them. And please don't overuse antibiotics. We don't need, what is it? Not all bugs need drugs, um, even strep throat now. Um, we're finding that we're only reducing the duration of symptoms by 24 to 48 hours. So that's only one or two days. Um, not all bugs need drugs, and we'll, I can talk more about that later. So um, is that all I talked about there? Oh, and then like exposure to past pathogenic bacteria can also damage our gut. So if you've been exposed to any um, parasites, candida, fungus, those can damage our gut, and we want to be making sure that we are killing off the bad and reseeding with the good um, as well as another big one that we don't think of is emotional stress. Stress has a huge impact on our, our gut microbiome and those leaky junctions. So it's very important to address our stress and work very hard to eliminate or just change the way we are reacting to our daily stress. So that's really important. So let's talk now about strategies to heal your guts. Number one, we talked about, maybe I'll have to open the second page. I hope you can see these slides, not that I'm following them. <laughs> so number one, I want you to remove those inflammatory foods, those things that are kind of drawing those intestinal cells apart. Gluten, dairy are big ones, as well as try not to eat a whole bunch of like heavily pesticides foods. There's the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15 at the environmentalworkinggroup.org. You can check those out. I can post them as well if you're interested, but try to eat organic from the the dirty dozen um, and then the clean 15 are fine to eat non-organic and just prioritize. I know organic's more expensive. It's not always accessible, but we want to be lowering our exposure to those pesticides and those herbicides because not only are they killing the bacteria on the food, they're damaging the bacteria in our guts as well. So we want to remove the inflammatory triggers, which is diet and which is our stress as well as let's nourish our gut with key nutrients. We will talk about a couple foods that I really like. They provide really great amino acids for healing our gut. And we also need to optimize our digestive organs. If our stomach is not producing enough stomach acid, we are gonna have a hard time breaking down certain components of our food and absorbing them. If our livers are not detoxifying and um, helping us to break down our fats, we're also gonna be having a problem. So, that's what we need to do. We need to support the organs that are helping our, our GI system as well as we need to rebalance the gut microbiome. We need to make sure we are having a constant supply of really great bacteria to outcompete with the bad. Um, and we can do that, yes, with probiotics. I typically recommend at least 50 billion, 30 to 50 billion um, CFUs of probiotics is really great. And we want to like have a big diversity of different probiotics. And you don't have to have probiotics. You can do fermented foods. Um, we'll talk about why I love sauerkraut and why it's so great. Um, yeah, those are some things you can do, as well as avoiding these top triggers. GMO, 
GMO pesticides, herbicides I've talked about are really important. Um, they kill all sorts of bacteria in our gut that we want to be keeping around. Um, we want to be avoiding antibiotic and like really antimicrobial um, hand sanitizers all the time and soap. So like triclostin is one ingredient that maybe we should look to avoid in our soaps and um, hand sanitizers if we can. Um, stress, we talked about lowering personal care products as well as processed foods and processed sugar is really hard on our bodies. Um, and then identifying what your unique food sensitivities are. So maybe you're one of the people who are sensitive to eggs. Maybe you're one of the people that is sensitive to citrus. I would love to find what is unique for you. And just like pay attention to how you feel after you eat a food that is really helpful to determine what your food sensitivities are. And of course there is IgG food sensitivity testing or elimination diets if you want to grow, go that route as well. So let's talk about the foods that I really like and I see them on the gut soothing supplements. Um, my notes aren't in order, but these are, you can go through it. These are some supplements that I think are really great for nourishing your body, healing your body. And I don't even see my number one on here, which is weird. Come on. Mm -hmm. Bone broth, bone broth, where are you? Huh, it's gotta be on here. That's my number one. So the number one supplement, food supplement that I think is really great is bone broth. Bone broth contains unique amino acids, which are proline, glycine, and glutamine. And these are all really important for nourishing the body and healing your gut. Proline actually supports collagen. So what proline does is it'll help to make those tight junctions tight um, so that foods are not getting, getting through that we don't want to. And it'll also help make your skin nice and tight. It's really great for, um, I know where there's some ladies in here that are having that diastasis recti, which is a ligament that's been stretched apart a lot of the time from childbirth. So drinking bone broth is really great, providing that proline to help repair um, the collagen in our skin as well. So uh, yes, that's great. Glycine is an important amino acid because it promotes detoxification, which is awesome. We always want to be doing that, getting rid of our toxic burden. L-glutamine is the fuel that our small intestine bacteria use. So this is really important for healing um, and repairing the leaky gut. So 80% of our immune system is in our guts. So when our moms and grandmas were recommending that we have chicken soup for um, a cold that was really, really, really great advice because that'll help to get us over our flus and colds faster um, as long as we're not compiling unnecessary antibiotics right on top of it. So number one, bone broth. Number two would be coconut oil. Coconut oil is amazing, not only for balancing your blood sugar. I hope that you've tried it in your coffee in the morning to see what you thought, but it's also really um, great for if you have any candida or like negative unwanted bacteria overgrowth because it's antimicrobial. It'll help to get rid of the bad bacteria that um, we have in our, in our guts. Number three would be fermented foods like sauerkraut and kimchi. I will post a recipe for um, a kimchi dish. You can get this at health food stores. You wanna be making sure that your sauerkraut and kimchi hasn't been heated really excessively to kill the bacteria. So um, check on the back to see if it actually has some live bacteria in it. Most of the ones at the health food store will, but you just wanna be making sure that um, you're actually getting some bacteria in those products. Um, fermented foods are really great, specifically cabbage, because they contain organic acids, which is necessary for the health and the growth and creating a good environment for those probiotics to thrive. Um, it's not just enough to be eating probiotics, we also need to make sure the environment's right and there's food for them to grow um, and to thrive. Cabbage also contains really unique forms of sulfur, and that helps not only for the liver to detoxify, but also it's been shown to heal stomach ulcers, which is really great. Um, other foods that provide really great bacteria or probiotics would be kefir. If you, it's hard to find, but if you can find goat's milk kefir, this is just milk that's been fermented. It's easier to digest, and it doesn't have the A1 casein that milk has, which kind of causes a lot of problems for a variety of different people. It has A2. Um, not to get too technical, but I find that patients who consume the A2 
even though they might be sensitive to dairy, do much better. And I don't know if it's the H. casein or if it's the fact that it's um, easier to digest or if there's more probiotics, but I just find that that's easier for a lot of people. So if you can find that great, try it out. Um, make sure that it doesn't have a whole bunch of weird sugars or additives into it, and you can add that to your smoothie. That's a great way to get your probiotics in every day. My next favorite food, besides those fermented ones, coconut oil and brombok, would be berries. Berries are really great because they have a lot of fiber, so they're not causing those huge spikes in blood sugar because their net carbs are lower, and you guys are all masters at net carbs now, but they also contain antioxidants as well as like resveratrol and flavonoids, which help to reduce that inflammation, not only in our gut, but throughout the body. And now, as you may or may not know, in naturopathic medicine, we study traditional Chinese medicine as well, and we want to be eating warm foods if we're looking to heal our guts. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, the spleen and stomach digest warm foods better. So let's eat soups and stews and let's cook and add heat and add cinnamon to our smoothies. That all helps to warm it up um, because raw foods, according to traditional Chinese medicine, is hard on our spleen and stomach to digest. And interestingly enough, in this form of medicine, they also pair emotions with organs. So the spleen and stomach is paired with the emotion, worry, um, overthinking, um, anxiety. So if those are some of the things that you are having going on in your life, let's look at ways that we can just maybe do some deep breaths, maybe do a meditation to, you know, think like our worry and our emotions have a huge impact on our gut. Like IBS is huge with stress. And if we can lower our stress, change the way we react to situations, we are going to help heal our bodies, reduce inflammation, and specifically heal our guts, which is really important. So other things you can do to increase probiotic diversity are... I probably don't have this in the notes, but get dirty, go outside, play in the soil. Um, actually, people who have pets have a 50% better immune system, meaning that their immune system is more diverse, they get sick less often because their pets, specifically a dog, is bringing in those soil microbes we're getting exposed to more diverse. Um, different bugs, so we're actually strengthening our immune system. So get outside, be in the dirt, we don't have to, I mean, if you're having organic vegetables from your garden, there is no need to really scrub them so they're completely um, sanitary. It's okay to eat some dirt. Dirt has really important soil microbes, which is important for our guts, and we are not being exposed to enough of those. So if this all doesn't work for you, let's do a probiotic supplement. Again, I said aim for 50 billion. Um, probiotics are really great because they kind of protect those tight junctions. So if you do go and you eat gluten or you eat dairy, you'll have a little bit of an extra barrier. Um, probiotics also create vitamins such as vitamin B12 and vitamin K. Those are made in our guts and we want to make sure that we have healthy bacteria to make those vitamins for us. They help digestion, they help to break down food so that we can absorb things better and they regulate our immune system. So I've been looking all around on this webinar. I don't know if I should look at the screen where I'm trying to follow my notes or look over here where my picture is, but I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much, Kennedy, for um, requesting this talk today. Um, I hope it's shed some lights on um, how leaky gut can be actually the root cause for a lot of your different symptoms. So I will upload this video. I will upload the notes um, that I did a terrible job following for you to read if you want to go ahead and read those. So I hope you had a great Sunday. We will see you on Monday to talk about your goals for the week. And I cannot wait to see your results. Bye ladies. Oh, not yet. I have to stop the share and now I need to end meeting so much new technology.